The Cincinnati Bengals will visit the New England Patriots in week six of NFL action. Welcome back to Tom Brady. The Patriots quarterback showed no effects of his long-term layoff due to the Deflategate scandal, carving up the Browns in his first meaningful game since last season's AFC Championship. It looked like Brady was dialed in. Sure, it was only against the lowly Browns, but Brady looked sharp and the Cincinnati Bengals could be in for a workout trying to slow him down in week six. The Patriots are getting plenty of support now that Brady is back in the lineup, and it's not hard to see why. Opening as an eight-point favorite, the Patriots have gotten over 80% of their early action, driving the spread up to nine points. New England easily covered the 10-point spread at Cleveland, but playing the Bengals is a different game than playing the Browns. The line is tempting for the visitors, who are in desperate need of a win. Andy Dalton and the Cincinnati Bengals had four reliable options in red zone scenarios last year. This season, only A.J. Green has a red zone touchdown catch. The Bengals rank last in red zone touchdown efficiency, converting just 31% of their trips. They were one of the best last season, converting two-thirds of their trips into six points. Lack of production inside the 20-yard line is not the only reason why the Bengals are 2-2 two two at this point but it's an area that definitely needs to be better. It's no secret that the Bengals sorely miss Tyler Eifert, who has yet to play this season while recovering from off-season ankle surgery and a sore back. Eifert grabbed 11 touchdowns on his 15 targets last season. Cincinnati is also without two other receiving threats who contributed largely to the team's success last season. Both Marvin Jones and Mohamed Sano took their talents elsewhere. And without them and Eifert, the Bengals have suffered in the red zone. Those three players were targeted 33 times in the red zone last season. Cincinnati's leading rusher, Jeremy Hill, was removed from the Dallas game after sustaining a chest injury. It was the same injury that landed Hill on the injury report in advance of Sunday's game, and one that could impact the Bengals' ground game. Giovanni Bernard has split the time with Hill in the backfield, but is primarily used on passing downs. Bernard ran for 50 yards on nine carries, taking for Hill, but is not a durable every play option. On the Patriots' side of the field, Rob Gronkowski is listed at limited participation with a hamstring injury, while backup quarterback Jimmy Garoppolo is also listed with a right shoulder injury. With Tom Brady back at quarterback, limited play for Garoppolo should not affect anything. But Martellus Bennett and Dante Hightower are also listed with limited participation for Sunday's matchup. The Bengals looked horrible in their loss at Dallas over the weekend, and the Patriots were unstoppable in thumping the Browns. So the ideal pick is to go in New England now that Tom Brady has returned. But hold on for just a second. The Bengals still have a talented team despite losing three of their last four games. We've grown accustomed to regular season success in Cincinnati over the past several years, and to see the Bengals below 500 at this stage is very uncommon. The Bengals are a much tougher opponent than the Browns, and they may play out of desperation now that they are solidly in the middle of a packed AFC. Marvin Lewis has a plan to suffer through some adversity during the regular season and get pumped for a postseason run and eventually a postseason win. Brady had the comfort of facing the Browns in his return game, but won't be so lucky against the Bengals. We think Cincinnati has top-notch talent, and getting eight or nine points is a lot in the NFL, even against the Patriots. We say the Bengals pull off the upset, which is not really an upset at all. Our pick is for the Cincinnati Bengals plus nine points. Click over now and check out all the NFL and NCAA football odds on the board, and make a few wagers with BetDSI.com.